guys it's me your mamje welcome back to my youtube channel hope you like and subscribe for today's video i am going to discuss to you about elements compounds and mixtures so the basic question regarding to this topic is the differences between elements compounds and mixtures so ang goal natin sa lesson na ito ay ikumpara ang elements compounds and mixtures and as well as to know the different phases or states of matter before anything else we need to know first what is matter when we say matter that is anything that occupies space and has mass or lahat ng bagay na nasa kapaligiran mo o kahit na anong umuuko pa sa isang espasyo ay maituturin nating matter. Ang atoms at ang molecules ang siyang bumubuo sa matter at ito ay maaaring maging solid, liquid, or gas. And how is matter being classified? So, ang matter ay nahahati sa dalawa. Could be substances, and mixtures. At ang substance naman ay nahahati pa sa dalawa. Ito ay tinatawag na elements at saka compound. Well, mixture can be hetero and homogeneous mixture. And then let's let's start with the first phase of matter. And this is what we called solid. So ang solid, ito ay may saktong dami at may saktong hugis. At ang mga molecules nito ay siksik at hindi madaling dumadaloy o gumagalaw dahil sila ay hindi hiwa-hiwalay. So parang kayo ng jowa mo. Kapag mahal na mahal nyo ang isa't isa, ayaw nyo maghiwalay. Just like the particles of the solid face. Dikit-dikit at hindi hiwa-hiwalay. So hashtag solid relationship and then does not flow easily particles cannot move or slide to another okay next we have here liquid phase so ang liquid phase naman ito ay may saktong dami ngunit walang saktong hugis ang hugis nito ay nakadepende sa kung saan mo ito ilalagay Okay. And it flows easily. So, ang particles nito ay may pagitan sa bawat isa-isa, sa isa't isa. Katulad ng jowa mo, nagkalabuan kayo. So, si jowa, nang hingi ng space, sabi niya, Can you please give me some space? So, just like the particles of liquid, there are little spaces between them. So, hashtag Give me some space. Okay. So, lots of free space between particles. So, it takes the shape of the container. Okay, next. We have here the third phase of matter and we can call it as gas. So, ang gas, it has no definite shape and has no definite volume. So, compare sa dalawang nauna, ito naman ay walang saktong hugis at walang saktong dami. Okay. Lots of free space between the particles. Hi. Ang konting space na hiningi ni Jowa. Lumawak na ng lumawak. Ang sabi niya, gusto ko nang magpakalayo-layo at hahanapin ko lang ang sarili ko. So, just like the particles in gas phase, malayo na sa isa't isa. So, there, there are bigger spaces between the particles. Hashtag, give me more space. Okay. So, malayo na ang spasyo ng, or ng pagitan ng bawat particles na nasa gas. And it flows easily particles and can move past one to another. Okay, next. We have here pure substance. Okay, when we say pure substance, 
Ito ay binubuo lamang ng isang klase ng atom o grupo ng mga atom na tinatawag na molecules. Okay. So, ito ay may dalawang uri. Ang una dyan ay ang element at ang ikalawa naman ay compound. Sa una nating pag-aaralan dito ay ang elements. Okay. So, kapag sinabi nating elements, ito yung pinakasimpleng substance na hindi mo, man, hindi mo kailanman mapapaghiwalay. Okay? Further by chemical means. Okay? So, ang elements ay ang pinakasimpleng substance dahil binubuo lamang ito ng isang uri ng atom. Ang pinakamaliit na unit ng matter na binubuo ng tatlong particles ay ang protons, neutrons, at electrons. Okay. So, look at the picture. Ang neutron at ang proton ay parehas na nasa gitna o nasa loob ng isang atom na tinatawag nating nucleus. Okay. So, ang electron naman, kung makikita nyo, ito ay nasa labas o umiikot sa isang orbit. Okay. So, ang mga particles na ito ay may iba't ibang charges. So, ang proton ay positively charged. Ang electron naman ay negative charge. Habang ang neutron naman ay walang charge. So, ito ay neutral. Ayan. Yan ang proton. And then, that is the neutron. And that is what we call the nucleus. And then, there you go. That is the electron. Okay. So, next one. Okay. The given example is a kind of element. Hydrogen. So, as you can see there, that is number one. So, yung number in your upper left corner ay tinatawag nating atomic number. So, kung ano man ang atomic number ng isang element, yun ay equal sa dami o bilang ng proton. Okay? Nagkakaintindihan po tayo. Okay. Next. Ayan pa. So, kung ang hydrogen ay may isang Ah, kung ang hydrogen ay may isang proton, ang helium naman ay may dalawang proton. At ang atomic number naman ng helium ay, of course, the same, 2. Yan yung bilang ng proton na nasa loob ng isang nucleus. So, in this way, you already got or you have an idea and when you look at your periodic table, you have been noticing na nakaayos o nakaarrange ito in ascending or pataas or papataas yung atomic number. Mas maiintindihan nyo ang topic na ito kung kayo ay may hawak na periodic table of elements. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, kung papataas, paparami ng paparami ang bilang ng isang element or yung bilang ng proton ng isang element habang lumalaki ang atomic number nito. So, this is the example of periodic table of elements. So, what do you think is the reason bakit naka-arrange yung mga elements sa periodic table? Okay. Ito ay dahil upang malaman at maunawaan ng mga siyentipiko ang iba't ibang properties at characteristics ng isang elements depende kung nasaan ito sa periodic table. Okay? Ang vertical column ay tinatawag nating groups. At yung pahaba or pahigang linya or horizontal line ay tinatawag naman nating periods. Okay. 
So now, there are a total of 118 elements na uh, being identified by the scientists. So, 98 doon are naturally occurring. That could be found naturally on Earth. And then, the remaining 20 elements naman are what we call synthetic or made artificially by the chemist using different kinds of nuclear reaction. Okay. Next, we have here krypton. So, sa elements, malalaman natin kung ano ba ito kung alam natin ang paggamit or pagbasa ng simbol. Napapadali nating malaman kapag ito ay ginagamitan ng simbol. Hindi naman natin kailangan nakabisaduhin lahat ng nasa periodic table of elements as long as you know or familiar ka sa mga common elements. Okay, so that is a chemical symbol of an elements. Yung mga letters na nasa loob ng box. So, KR is a chemical symbol for krypton. The next, AG is for silver. SN is for tin. CU for copper. And XE is for xenon. So, those are some examples of the chemical symbols of an element. Okay, next. Okay. So, hydrogen. When we say hydrogen, that is the most abundant element in the universe. Ibig sabihin, yan yung pinaka uh, marami dito sa ating mundo. Okay. So, 75% of all the matter are in the universe. So, that is hydrogen. Okay. So, ang pumapangalawa naman sa hydrogen ay tinatawag nating helium na mayroong 20%. At halos lahat ng ibang elements ay masasabi nating madalang or rare na makita. Ang, okay. So, itong dalawang ito ay nakikita okay or bumubuo sa sun. Okay. Or yung mga stars na kapamilya naman ni sun. So, what makes up the stars? Up here, compound. When we say compound, the molecules made of atoms from different elements that are chemically combined. Meaning to say, one element plus one element is equal to compound or more atoms from the different elements. So, it could be homogeneous. It held together by a chemical bond. Okay. So, napakadalang lang na matagpuan ang isang element na walang halo o puro. At iilan lang dito ay ang copper, silver, gold, at sulfur. So, ang mga noble gases na ayaw makipag-band sa ibang elements ay nakikita rin as pure elements. Naturally, at ang karamihan sa elements na maliban sa mga ito ay matatagpuan na bilang mga compounds. Okay. So, ang compounds ay isang homogeneous. It means, it has the same structure and chemical composition na kahit sa ang bahagi ka kumuha ng sample ibig sabihin fix ang ratio ng chemical properties ng bawat isa nakadikit or naka-arrange ito gamit ang chemical bonds halimbawa nito hindi magbabago ang kahit na anong uh, boiling point and melting point ng isang compound kahit gaano kalaki or kaliit ang sample mo. So, ang compound ay maaari pang i-break down into simpler form hanggang sa makuha mo ang mga basic elements nito. 
So, para gawin yon kinakailangan natin gumamit ng chemical reactions na nagpapahina sa attraction or bond ng isang atoms. Okay. So, para tuluyan na itong magkahiwa-hiwalay. Okay. So, next, mixture. So, mixture is a combination of many different elements. Okay, isa, isa pa ang uri ito ng matter at ang kombinasyon lang ng maraming iba't ibang elements, hindi ito nagahalo dahil sa chemical reaction, kundi sa simpleng paghahalo lamang na pwedeng magresulta sa paghihiwalay ng bawat components nito. Okay. So, those are example of mixtures. So, ito ay maaring homogeneous. Ang halimbawa nito ay kapag pinaghalo mo ang powder juice at ang tubig, hindi mo na makikita or ma-identify pa kung nasaan ang powder juice. Dahil ito ay na-dissolve na ng water. Okay. So, masasabi naman natin na ang isang mixture ay heterogeneous kung ito ay madaling makita o mapapaghiwa-hiwalay. Okay. So, it is a combination of many different elements and not chemically combined. And of, of course, can be separated and also, yes, can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. So, furtherly, homogeneous from the word itself, homo, uniform, magkakamuka, or iisa. And then, pag sinabi naman natin heterogeneous, that is composed of different, magkakaiba pong substances, or iba't ibang um, ingredients, just like that. So, I think that would be all for this topic. Thank you for watching this video. So, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So, for the summary, we have here the three phases of matter, the solid, liquid, and gas. Matter is classified into pure substance and mixture. Pure substance is further classified into elements and compound, while mixture can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.